Hello viewers, it's Charles again. Welcome to QuickBooks 2016. We are now in module 3 and in this module we are talking about how to customize QuickBooks so it works best for your business. We are going to start by going through the preferences that are in QuickBooks. There are a ton of different preferences in here. Make sure you watch video number one and two for this module because that's part one and part two. I want to make sure you get a feel for all the options that are available in QuickBooks. Let's head over and I will show you how to get to the preferences. One of the things that you might not is that your icon bar is now on the on the top as i've discussed with you some in the previous videos you are seeing the icon bar this is the icon bar it is on the top right now it is on the top side of your screen and certainly if if you want to leave it there, it's also fine. Because me, I prefer to have that icon bar on top. But you can also change it and it, it, it shows on, on, on your left, your left side of the screen. All you have to do is click on the view from the menu bar. You click on view, then choose either you leave it at top, just this is where it is. You can put it on the left, just like the way you are seeing it here, or you can go ahead and hide it. Those are the options that we saw. For now, I've, uh, it is hidden. It is you can't see it anywhere. You can even maximize this, ah, and you are seeing the full screen. You are seeing the full home screen without the the, the icon bar. I've hidden it, but me, I prefer to have it there on top. We can either leave it, hide it, or we put it on top, or we put it on our left hand eh? on our left hand side so those are the options those are the options that you have so if you want to move it back the same way we said we go to the view you put it on on top now it has come back so me, I prefer to work when it is in that in that format so when i let me just leave it there so we said we go to menu on that menu bar we select view then we can adjust where we want it to where we want it to be but the good thing you've seen how we change that the other thing is the ability to navigate between your open windows. Right now, if you click on any of these icons, if maybe I click on customers right there, that is the dialog box that opens up when I click the customer. 
most so it, it captures the details of the customers so that's the, that's what we call that's a window that is a customer window is now open you can also click on any icon whatever icon you click on and if that open whatever whatever comes out is what we call a window so this is our window if we want to close this window we can leave it open we can leave it open and open another one i want to go click on home then i want to to open maybe if if let's say let's say you have you have a bills a bills to enter let me just open enter bills icon when i open it you will see that's also a window that is that has opened up and you may want actually to leave it open just like that because you can go somewhere else and do other things just just the same way we left the other the other customer open you can also leave that open and you go to home we open another maybe we, this time around we want to open vendors or the suppliers we've opened it is now also open we have opened the three meaning that's the ability of us navigating in in those different in those different windows that we've actually opened so the, there is if 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 you if the, the question is if I, if i want to close off this someone may be wondering how am i going to be able to close that and i i maybe i move to to the next thing we said one of the option we go to this the small x you are seeing here we don't click the small the, the bigger one up here because if you click on this one you are closing the whole quickbooks so we don't click on that we come to this small x you are seeing here when i click that way i've cancelled it i'm now on the home home screen we can maybe try to put this on the left the icon bar we we'll put it there we can also navigate from from here we can be able to click on my company and we we'll get the information that is on the company because these are all open open windows we open the customers it is still there that's what we opened we can navigate through using the icon bar even if it is still at the at, at the top you can just click here you can click at the snap, snapshot you see the whole of the company so to close you can click on that small x you are seeing there we can also close it or we can leave it empty we can leave it open anyway that works for you is what you you do but you've seen i've closed everything even plus the home screen but now i can navigate back using the icon bar so that's how we can be able to navigate so you can try maybe one more last time if i click on on enter bills on enter bills here we have let's say we wanted to put in information here for the customer you put in everything maybe what the the amount whatever you put in the 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 the, the, 
if if let's say you are paying rent the amount and you come here you you save and close there are two options you save and close or save and new save and close means you save and you close enter bills icon that's that's the meaning when you save and close it means enter bills icon is going to close completely but if you save and new it means you want to save this one then you enter another bill hope you have you have actually seen what we what we mean so right now we can say maybe we we save and close this is the save and close at the bottom so when we do that save and close we've closed everything so you would also come to come to your menu here the other option how we can navigate into the open windows that we have we can come to our menu up here and we click on windows windows is here when i click on that it will show me the the things that are open the one is you are seeing which is the one it is only one thing which is open maybe let me first open so many let me open many then we, we can be able to check out and see because we are doing we are doing the things for the first time and i need you to pick to pick me right so we go to our menu and we pick windows you are seeing we have one two three all of them there they are open one two three we, we've opened the bills we've opened the earning voice and we have a home section there are three which are open we can also navigate from there So if you don't want, if, if let's say you have opened like this, and now I want to go to home, what you just do, you come to window and you click home. You direct to go back to home. You go to windows, you go to enter bills. I will go direct to the bills. You click on maybe I wanted to invoice, create an invoice, you go back to the invoice icon or the invoice window that we opened. So that's how we open those windows up so even the other thing you can do maybe you can come to view here and you turn up these these windows the the, the, the open window list it is here on the top open window list you can see that if you click view and you you go to because now if you turn it on if you click it means you are checking it will, before we never had that tick let me click it's not there so you can check it or you can tick you can mark it when you mark it you can be able to navigate from here this is it shows open windows this is what we call the open window the open window list so how do we navigate or how do we move from now we are on create invoice we can now just click enter bills and we are on enter bills we can click on home and now we are in our home section so that's that's how we we navigate but when you open that when you open this open windows list it comes on your left so that's why we are seeing this on this left hand side so when you when when you do that it appears on your left and you will see all the open windows that that you have over there if I thought, even if you had opened a hundred, they would be reflecting here. Would be seeing all of them. 
So that's how we can work, we can be able to move from one window to another window at the same time. Or when you're using those different shortcuts that we that we, 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 we talked about. And maybe the other thing we said, if you want to close a window, make sure you are in that window. If let's say I want to close enter views, I make sure I first click and, I'm, and I make sure here I'm seeing views, the enter views window. Then I come to this X, you come on this top, on the, the, this small X is the one that we are going to click on and we have closed that. Even here it has disappeared. If you go to, to create invoices, you make sure that you are in that window before you click this star X that appears on the, on the top. So, one thing that I want to, 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 to make sure that I emphasize is you have to make sure that you you don't click this top X right up here. The last X in the corner, you don't click that because that will close QuickBooks. So we just want to close these other windows and we remain, we remain with our QuickBooks. So, now that you know how to set that up, let's go into the preferences right now. You want, a, you, you want to click on, on edit. If you are to go to those preferences, we are supposed to click on edit from the main, from the menu bar. This is our menu bar, the first, line, the first line item you are seeing here on the top is what we call the menu bar. So we click on edit. When you click on edit, it brings you that area where you are supposed to select from. So from that, from that, you can just go ahead and go down to the the last column which says preferences and click on that preferences so it has brought for us the different preferences that we can set or the different features that we can turn off and on that will help us to they are all here from the top to the bottom they are very many they are very many there are very many as you can see you can maybe you can do that and we make sure that we are on the same page because i want you to follow along so that we can be able to to move on the same pace maybe to close a little bit and i go back we said we come to menu and we pick we, we click on edit we go down to this sub menu and we pick preferences that's bring that will bring us to that preference sub menu or that window so we are seeing there there are a lot of options and you will notice that whichever option you click on on the left you will see two tabs on your right hand side if if it, now right right now you are seeing um, uh, we've clicked in the general and we are seeing two two tabs we have the my preference and the company preference so there are two when i open when i click maybe accounting i have my preference and then company preference if i click bills I have my 
preference and then company preference. So that's what we are meaning. Whichever item you click on on the on on the left hand side, it will give you these two tabs: my my preference and the company preference. So we need to set those up. There are very many meaning. Whichever we we put on and whichever we remove will have an effect or it will, it will have an impact in our in our home screen this is the very point where we can be able to add some of these icons that you've seen at the at the home screen so we are going to go through each of those items but we are going to skip some of them we are going to pick the ones that are most relevant the rest we shall keep handling them as we proceed in the different versions of quickbooks so we've seen that the right hand side has two options one says my preferences and the other says company preferences this is the my preferences this is the company preferences those are the two things that are there. So you make sure that you click on both tabs when you are looking at your options to just make sure you have seen everything. Because when you click at my, my preferences here, you can actually see. If, 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 if you are in this desktop, desktop view, remember we've been seeing multiple windows. If we are able to do that because we had already, this one was already turned on automatically. Multiple windows, we can able, we can basically see the multiple windows because this option is active. But if it was in this, we couldn't navigate into the different windows. So we could just open one window at a time. You can't open another one when the other one is still open. So. That's why these things, they are very important. So you have to be careful and let's go, like we, we, we move together so that you don't get stuck when you are doing it on, on your own. And make sure whatever we do here, after watching the video, make sure you come back and practice on your own. Then you go and revisit the video, make sure you go through, Check with what you did. You see when you see whether we are comply or we are we are complying. Or you make sure that you, at least we are moving on the same pace. That's very important because we need to follow along. So that's what we have. I hope you have actually reached where where I am now. So let me let me close off close it again. I reopen it. You said we we'll go to edit preferences, and then we, that screen comes up. Typically, when you open, when you first open it, or when you first come in, you will see, or you will notice that it is automatically opening. Or oh, it is automatically pointing at general. Here you are seeing it is general. We have just opened. It is pointing at general. Even if we click and go back, we can. We said we go to edit preferences. It comes when it is in the general. It has. It, it, it is highlighting the general. So that is the general option that it is highlighting. But we are going to start under accounting, or we are going to start from the first point. Even though it has been opening, or it is, it, 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 its default is opening the general, but we are going to start from accounting. We start from that accounting option. We are going to click on company preferences because my preference, we don't have anything here. So we click on company preferences. Now there are a few 
things here I want to point out. The very, the, 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 the very first one being that you have the ability to use account numbers in QuickBooks. Let me show you what, what it looks like since this option is turned off automatically. This one, accounts, use account numbers. It is turned off. So I want to show you what it means or how it looks like when those account numbers are turned off. It's not ticked. Because if it was ticked like that, then it would be turned on. But it's off. By default, it is off. So I want to show you how it looks like before we turn it on. Then I show you how it looks like when they are when those are on. You will see the difference and you'll understand why we have to set these company preferences. So I'm going to cancel this for a moment. I've cancelled that. If you remember, we if you remember, actually, if you remember very well, I spoke about what we call charts of accounts. And we've said charts of accounts are the most important part of kickbooks. And we said we should always be careful with 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 them i'm going to go ahead and open the charts account the the charts of accounts so we want to open those charts of accounts and we see how are they looking like without account numbers and we've said the charts of accounts they are always in the company section of the home screen that's why we went through the other environment quickbooks environment to know the section that if I, i'm looking for charts of accounts i know where to find them so don't take those groupings for granted those videos are made in they are systematic if you follow them from the very first one because we are giving them module per module module one module two module three if you go through those in that very arrangement you'll be able to get me right so we come to charts the company section and we click on charts of accounts so i've clicked on charts of accounts but this is how it looks like observe very well let me first close this observe very well this side here we don't have anything like any numbers here so that's how it looks like without account numbers hope you can be able to to see that Because the good thing you are seeing that some of the things they are arranged in these whatever these items are they are arranged in a, in 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 an, an alphabetical order or they are arranged alphabetically. Now it's alphabetically because based on the type. Because now we are seeing accounts receivable accumulated depreciation then you, you are seeing now the next one is furniture and equipment they are not they are best they are they are organized alphabetically basing on the account type that we are from this they are based on the accounts type and now let's let's now go 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 ahead and look at look at the 
we'll go ahead and look at the we we'll look at the the other side when we have accounting estimates for those who are maybe who have not maybe to clarify on this when i say they are arranged alphabetically as per the types of account of, of the account types or the types of accounts you look at this this is an account c receivable when you look here it starts with accounts receivable this is a finance sorry fixed asset they are not starting with the furniture no they are starting with accumulated depreciation then they follow with the letter that's the alphabet order i meaning that as per the account type this is accounts receivable meaning they are supposed to start with something that starts with a that's why we are seeing account c payable if we had anything to do with maybe vendors or a given supplier they would put that person here down alphabetically if you look at these incomes we are seeing that they are starting with sales because these are all s but as you know how to, how to organize alphabetically, you, you cancel this one out and you check the next letter. This is A, this is H. That's why this is alphabetically. Maybe we can check this one, which are many. Cost of, cost of goods sold. We have freight and shipping. The next thing is merchant. The other one is product sample and purchases. So you are seeing how they are arranged alphabetically in that order of based on, on their account types. So that's what I meant. Hope that one clarifies what you, what you are supposed to, to know for now. But now what you have to understand in accounting, you may want to use what we call general ledger. Because now when you are using general ledger, a general ledger always has that general ledger numbers. That this information has been picked in a general ledger number what number what number what so if you are to use those general general ledger numbers then i'm going to go back to edit and i go down to preferences and under accounting i'm going to check on that company preference and i i, I mark that box which says use accounting numbers because by using account numbers, those account numbers, they are representing the general ledger numbers. So I want, uh, let me close off this. Even if I don't cross, I just come to, to this because I, I, I show, I, 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 I've, I've illustrated how, to, how you can be able to navigate in different, in different, in different windows. We said we come to edit, we go to preferences, and we come to this accounting, which we go to company preference and we check this on. By default, when you do that and you click OK, you are going to see that we have got these numbers here. These numbers you are seeing here, they are the ones that we call general ledger numbers, or they are the ones that we call the, uh, the account numbers. For them, the general ledger numbers, the good books, for them, they call them account numbers. They call them account numbers because these are accounts. Accounts, receivable account, furniture and equipment account. So these are account numbers for, for the different, for the different, for the different account, account, account types. So, You've seen when you click OK, you can see that here the general ledger numbers, these ones, they have come up. You can use them or you can you can ignore them. But to be professional, I totally I totally agree that you actually said you click that, you set that preference and you make sure they are turned on. So that we can be able to use them. They are not, it, even if you don't use them, it is okay, but 
to be profess to be like a professional you turn them on to make sure that this your work is is good and we shall see how we can be able to use some of those because there is somewhere we can use them to when we are setting up accounts so we've said it is optional you can use them or you may not and if you do if if you actually want to use them then you probably you need to you need to check that up on and be able to use but for those who are going to if you are going to use it 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 will probably end up editing a lot of things to match those to match the numbers that you would like to to use but this is the this, this option we have to turn it on it is an option that we can turn on and you can turn off but i i recommend that you you make sure that at least you turn them on on so let me go back to the preferences and we go to another item because we've seen there are very many items that we want to look at. So we can close this even if we don't close. And we just go direct here because we know now how to navigate. So we are back. We are back into the preferences. We've 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 looked at the that. Then, then one thing I want to 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 to, to recommend on this class when we are still under. The accounting as an option i had forgotten that because it is also important someone may may may, may wonder why is it unchecked okay that's the other thing i want to show you when you're using that class but now use class tracking for transaction that see it's not automatically on but if you want we can turn it on and we can turn it off and if you turn it on like that you are going to have an extra field on every transaction that you will have a drop down list of classes that you actually set up this one will we shall use it more often when we are looking at setting up accounts what what this means is that in other words how do we use this class feature if you have a business and you would like to break your business down into smaller sections for reporting purposes, you would use the class tracking feature. As an example, maybe we can just, as an illustration, if maybe you would like to track each transaction in quickbooks and you would want quickbooks to tell you if it's part of the of let's say insurance because now you may be having insurance as an expense but insurance has gotten so many types like we have heredity we have compensation benefits for employees we have a heredity we have life there are so many so when you are using that class 
it means you are going to class if, if at all you are paying medical expenses to your employees you will make sure that you classify that health expense under insurance it means we are breaking down the expenses there are those insurance packages that we are going to pay when they are going to physical assets they are going to maybe it is for car or the company cars so they are different from those that are going to individuals and you are not going to just mix them so if you are to use that then you make sure that you put that on that class you you keep tracking so it means on every every item you are seeing here if let's say it is an expense insurance expense it will have a drop down list to show you that this is going for maybe health expense this is going for company car expense in terms of insurance so that's what we are meaning so when that feature is turned on you can have that insurance let's say insurance expense having a drop down list maybe of two to two two to three items then the other thing you may look at another example we can maybe try to demonstrate here is that if you are that company and you have very many branches but you want to report the sales that were made by that branch in other words the sales it will come as a sales figure here but on that sales figure it comprises of the different sales values that came from the different branches so if you want to show that this is the total sales of let's say 2 billion but that 2 billion is broken down in those different each branch contributed this towards that total that's what we are calling class or using the class tracking for transaction hope you can be able to pick that right if let's say the company has five locations those branches they are located maybe they are in different districts five different districts and they have their head office when they are reporting they recon it is the head office that is going to reconcile all the sales that were made by the different branches but the point here is we can be able to see the contribution from the each branch so how can we do that in quickbooks you said that's going to be those cells from the different branches they are going to be so those cells they are going to be from they will show the total cells and each contribution from the different branches so that's how we use that e, tracking tracking for transactions so we can now go to the next the next thing i want to show you here is the fact that you can close your books in quickbooks you would you would set a date You will be set a date and a password right here. Sorry about that, the network had 
jammed a little bit and now we can proceed i was saying that the next thing i want to show you here is the fact that you can close your books in quickbooks you can close your books in quickbooks you would want to to set a date and a password so what do we mean by setting a date and a password this is the this is the option that we are seeing right here if if you want to set maybe okay what you are looking at here this last point where it says closing date down here it has set date stroke password i want to explain something here on the date warnings that we have here that i already checked this is the last item that i i need to explain on that accounting option that we've seen there so what this means is that in real in real life accounting you close the books at the end of every month and then you close the books at the end of of the year there are two options you can close them at the beginning of the uh, uh, sorry you close them at the end of the month we see the transaction that we have throughout that month then we close the whole books at the end of the year to see whatever we had for that year now here is what that means let's say that you are currently let's say currently now we are in feb 2024 and maybe you decide to close the books for the prior month the prior month i mean january which which you want to to close off if let's say want to close off the books for for the for the previous month but now right now you are in february and you see something maybe you want to delete or maybe you want to put a check or maybe you maybe you've seen because now the the other month has passed but you may realize when you are already in Feb, the other month has already passed, but you made a mistake in that previous month. And maybe you say, I paid maybe I paid the other supplier twice. So if you if you paid the other supplier twice in the other in, in the month of January and you want to and now you realized you made that mistake but you never saw it in january what that means is that you are not going to be able to actually delete that duplicate check or that second check that you made you are going to have to make an offsetting entry in the current period that is feb in order to reconcile the other error that you had made in the previous period that's what we are meaning here if you made an error in january but you you realize that error in feb when the other month has already been closed what you do you only enter an offsetting entry to clear the other error you made but there is no way you can go back and delete the other it's like when the books have already been audited and you want to go back and check that you realize you did some errors because the books were already edited what you can only do is come to this here and make an offsetting entry 
So this is where you would, you would come to close your books. Because remember, you are, you've, seen, you, you've seen you made a mistake. But it means when you made a mistake, the books were not properly closed. So you need to close them rightly. So the only, the only way you can do it is by coming here. How is it done? You would set a date, and usually it is the end of the month. And then you would actually set a password here so that anyone who is using QuickBooks can't read. In other words, he can't access anything prior to that closed period. But for me, I'm not going to do that right now. But I want you to know it's here, down here. And just know that QuickBooks doesn't make, like, it doesn't, it will not tell you to do it. And there is no way QuickBooks is going to warn you for the mistake that you may commit. But I just want, I just want you to know that there is an option where you can reverse some of those things. You just need to know where it is. And when you are ready to close the books, you can actually come and, and check the this downer part as we as you've seen. So let's head over down to the next one. The next one I'm going to look at, these are interviews, what what. So these ones we can just skip on. Maybe we'll go to checkings. Sorry, 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 I've not closed. There is no way you can go when you have not closed this because we have made some adjustment. We need to click OK. When you do that, you have sorted that one. We we'll go back to preference and now we are looking at checking. We are now in my preferences. You can skip that preference and we we'll look at company preferences you will see there are several different options as far as checking the checking your register so you can read through because now i'm seeing a lot of these are on your own because now some of these things you just select they are just on on your own i'm just going to highlight some some small small things here but those you can just read through whatever comes out or whatever you 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 may need because this is as per the company what the company wants if the company is going to do this then you of course you read through you'll be able to, to be because this is in the bank what you'll basically do in the bank so those you read it through just to understand but you check only when it's needed but for me i do want to i do want you to notice a couple of things that you have that you have your bank feeds option down here at the bottom this this bank feeds it's the one i want you to at least you make some observation, you see what we have there. I know we will talk about bank feeds in a later modules, but that basically means if you want to link QuickBooks to your bank so that it will download the transactions, you can do that from here. But now there is, there is this classic there is express mode, there is classic mode. This, this express mode is really outdated. You can say it is off. Even this one, classic mode, is also outdated. In, in newer versions, we have another option, which is, which is the, the one we call advanced option. 
But for 2016, it is not there. That's why we are not seeing here any advanced option. Even this one is outdated. But for now, for us, we shall click on a classic mode because it is the one at least we have. The advanced mode is in those newer versions and it's not available in our QuickBooks 2016 version. But if you are using a version of let's say 2020, 2021, 2022, that advanced mode is there and you will be seeing it. So if you are using the other version, then I would say you click on the advanced mode. But here for us, we are, we are going to go with the classic mode even though see outdated. But just know this is where you come to change that option. And if you want to see, to see that in a different way, we are We can also go, go by this express and we just leave it that way. So any of those will work. Even though they are outdated, but they, they can still work. So that's what we, we've so far changed. We've not changed many here. We can press OK and then we go to the next one. Go to preference and then we can come back now to this one desktop this one we've seen finance charges we've seen basically what is here is make sure that this one multiple is turned on because you need it there is nothing more there let's go to maybe general that's where we can change some because i'm seeing there are very many things here most of them they are ticked and others are not. The first option here says pressing enter to move between the fields. This one is very important. You make sure you check it. Pressing enter, this is pressing enter key to move. It's like if you don't click this one, when you press enter on your keyboard, it, the, the cursor will not move. So putting it, putting that one on, it means you are, when you press enter, the cursor can move to the next field. That's the meaning. And I know you know you, you know what it means, especially when you're working in Excel. If you press enter and the cursor doesn't move to the next to the next line, then it will be a problem. So you need to set that up. So that's what that, that's very key. So we definitely need to turn that on. So, the, the, maybe the other thing we can talk about here if I read through, the other one we can talk about because most of the most of these of these they are they are ticked. So we need to, to look at those which are not ticked and we we'll talk about them a little bit. But we are looking for those that are most important. Now, there is one here, automatically recall information. This is also very important. You have to, this one is not turned on, but I want to, to explain to you what it means. Automatically recall last transaction for, for this name. We have to turn this one on. Why? Because we need to save time. What, is, what this means is that if maybe we are entering a bill, maybe for customer, let's say Ivan, and when we clear that Ivan and we're putting the, all the information, if we enter that transaction, maybe for Ivan, 
and maybe we, we want to pay Ivan. He had supplied for us raw materials and we are paying him. What that means is that then if you turn that one on, the next time you are paying the same Ivan or the same supplier, the, the, the name Ivan will be pulled from the previous transaction. In other words, for you, you will just be left to just put in the amounts and proceed to pay the customer or sorry to pay the supplier but it will pull the names of that supplier back meaning you will not need to 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 fill in all the accounts details of that of that supplier than what this one this one was saying pre-fill accounts for vendors based on past entry this one just pulls the names but if you click on this one this one will pull everything even the amount you paid last time that's what they will pull of which we don't need that we just need to pull the information just the name of the customer where they are their address and everything plus for us we just put in the amount not pulling everything so this one is very important we make sure that it is it is on So now, that's the that's the, 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 the that's it for automatic recall information. Then there is this default date to use for new entry. Now, this is the this is the other thing I want to mention here. You probably want to use today's date as a default, not using the last entered date as a default. We use today's date as a default because we are not work. We are not working backwards. If I enter the transaction on 15, on let's say fifteenth last year, I need if I'm to put the same details today. At least I should pull the day of today, not the days of fifteenth. So this one we change it to use today as default. Today's data as default because the time we will be putting in the information. We need to we need we need QuickBooks to pull that same information from that very day to pull out that date. So that's what it means. So hope you are seeing how some of these they, they can be able to help you save time. So, because you have to know that every transaction has a current date. The, the, the day you are making that transaction is that current date. So, we, we don't need the things of that we are supposed to pull the other last, last day of the transaction, then we start editing, no. So, we have to look at, at these other, some of these other options and you see if there is anything at some point that you you may want to turn on or off we can maybe go ahead and look at one one option here we can look at maybe inventory and items sorry i've not i've not saved because we've made some changes we need to save we go to items and inventory we click on company preference when i look at the company preference because now some of the things that you see some of these are ticked this one is ticked this one is ticked even this one is ticked how are they ticked we ticked those ones or we made we made QuickBooks to tick them when we answered the easy step interview. We answered those questions that QuickBooks was asking us, and it was enabling some of these things to to be on and off. So some of those were taken on, others were removed. 
based on how we answered those questions. Because now, remember we said we said we we said we 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 we, we wanted QuickBooks to to know that we are going to use inventory. But if you are told QuickBooks that I don't do inventory, then you you wouldn't have any of these you are seeing here checked. So, and some of these, if you unclick them, some of the icons there, they are going to, they are going to go off completely. So that's why when these ones are on, that's why we are, you, you, you are able to see that there is purchase orders, there is, there is receiving inventory and all that, they are all there. The reason as why they are all there is because we've actually, Told the QuickBooks that we are going to do inventory. So let's go ahead and stop this video right here. I want you to go over to part two of this same same preference because we have not yet completed. Remember, we've just reached at inventory and items. So we are going to video number two in this module and you will be you will continue talking about the different preferences until we finish all of them all of them here so that's all for now we we'll see you then